gentleman's time has expired. The gentleman from Texas. Mr. Speaker, I ask permission to address the House for one minute, revise and extend my remarks. Without objection. Mr. Speaker, I also come to the floor today to talk about this $700 billion bill that's in front of us. I use the term bill advisedly because we have seen no bill. We are here debating talking points on perhaps what is one of the most largest, the largest fundamental change in our nation's financial system in its history. And House Republicans have been cut out of the process. Not only have we been cut out of the process, we've also been derided by the leadership of the Democratic Party and called unpatriotic for not participating. Mr. Speaker, I have been thrown out of more meetings in this Capitol in the last 24 hours than I ever thought possible as a duly elected representative of 820,000 citizens of North Texas. Mr. Speaker, Politics is a full-contact sport, and I understand that, but it is a full-contact sport in the light of day in the public arena. Since we didn't have hearings, since we didn't have markups, let's at least put this legislation up on the Internet for 24 hours. That's what Thomas was made for. Let's do that and let the American people see what we have done in the dark of night. After all, I have not gotten any more mail, any more emails on any other subject than this one that is before us today. Mr. Speaker, I understand we're under martial law, as declared by the Speaker last night. I think it's ironic. House Republicans have not been needed for a single thing in this House to assure passage for the last 22 months. And today, we're going to be asked to vote for a bill for political cover because Democrats are too weak to stand up to the, their Speaker. I yield back. The gentleman's time has expired. The gentleman from New Jersey. If this were a dictatorship, it'd be a heck of a lot easier. <laughs> just so long as I'm the dictator. 